In this next part, we'll be downloading some fonts, so the easiest place to find those, apart from the original workbench discs, is on the Duke's Paint 2 disc. You can see I'm downloading from archive.org, and that will download as an ADF file, which I've now put into the floppy disk drive of my emulator. You can see Deluxe Paint 2 comes with its own drawers and its own icon style because this was drawn with Workbench 1.2 in mind. We're actually running Workbench 3.1 at the moment. So there is some difference and you can see that we can view those icons. So what we're going to do now is create another drawer. Let's call this Art. And you can see the Art drawer has appeared on the bottom. So what we can do is move those drawers around so that the art drawer is, well, at the top somehow. We can do that manually, hopefully, by dragging and dropping that. And let's replace the devs drawer, which isn't really necessary. So let's snapshot those. And now, hopefully, we can now open up the blank drawer. So let's make another directory in here and call this Deluxe Paint 2. It doesn't really matter what you call these drawers, we'll be manually installing everything to the hard drive. So you can rename those drawers. So now that we've created that drawer, we can copy things to it, or we can simply drag and drop the disk icon and drag and drop that into place. And if we drag and drop that, it seemingly into that drawer, it will install that entire disk, the contents of the entire disk, onto the hard drive into the parent drawer. So that's actually going to copy everything that we've got on that entire disk to the art directory that we're in at the moment. It's not going to copy it to Deepaint 2, it's going to create its own directory. And that's not too bad as long as we've got everything that we need on the hard drive. So there it is, it's created yet another directory called Deepaint. And so we can put that Deepaint wherever we want it. Yes, the entire contents of the disk, even the hidden files, should hopefully be on there now. So that should mean accessing this is a lot quicker. So before we go out any further, we can rename our substitute. Let's call that a picture repository. Let's just call that my pics. So we can put our pictures in there and you can see that we can rename those as well. Let's call that deluxe paint too. To differentiate that between all the other D paints that we might want to install. So going back into CLI or shell, let's do a CD into that archive. Let's go into that directory by typing CD. And now we can see all those files, including all the hidden ones. And that means that we can copy over onto our workbench any files that we need to run Deluxe Paint 2. And the C commands are the first port of call. And the most interesting part about manually installing things from disks is the fact that we can rob and find and uncover all kinds of commands buried away on those disks. So any commands that we don't have in the C directory, like the if command, can be copied over at this point, and so we can consolidate the list of commands that we've got on our workbench. So you can see the workbench 1.3 echo command is in there, or even 1.2. And we don't have echo because it doesn't come with 3.1. So let's copy echo to C. And that will simply copy that command into our bank of commands. Um, there is an if command there. And if I try to list C call on if, it will try to list the files on the C drive. That's not what we want. We want to list all of the files in C, but we want to list the if command in C. So let's list if, and it tells us that it was created in 1986. So it is an old if file. And if we wanted to check those file version numbers, it's sometimes difficult, but sometimes we can type version and then the file, and it will give us the version number of that current file, so we know which file, which C command, is the latest version. So we're not really getting too much 
farther with this, but I don't see any farther C commands that we need. So looking in the fonts directory, we can see all of the fonts that are available on this disk. All of these fonts are Workbench compatible fonts. And so all we need to do is to copy all of those over onto the fonts directory of our existing Workbench. To do that, if we type in copy and then the directory followed by all, and then I think it's question mark hash that should copy everything to the destination directory, including any subdirectories. I'm struggling to remember any of that at the moment as I'm typing this in, so hopefully I'll get around eventually to copy the fonts at least. Copy the fonts all, well I haven't put the question mark and the hash mark at the end so it's not going to like that. Let's try a copy all fonts, is it going to copy all fonts? And again I'm, I'm trying to come up with all the quick keys because they're remapped on my Amiga differently to how they're remapped on a PC. I finally got most of those copied, you can see it's created the directories for us. So I type copy all hash question mark fonts and it's copied all of them across all of the fonts it's created all of the directories and it's copied all of the fonts from those into our fonts directory on our hard drive which we were already in so that's copied all of those hopefully in so that we can now use those in workbench so let's check out the font preferences i can check out the icon preferences and topaz is definitely the easiest one to read and if you change that into any other font you might be struggling to read that but you can see it is possible to do that now that we've installed the fonts from the deluxe paint 2 disc and you can see we can select the sizes as well and I think if you select the font fix program then you can select even more sizes and create new sizes of the fonts based on the sizes that are there already and you can type intermittent sizes in all you like and it will guess at what fonts that's supposed to be and what it's supposed to look like so we can have topaz 12 if we really wanted that and we can have ruby 12 as well and then once we finally are all right with whatever we've selected there we can click on ok and that hopefully should change all of the fonts that we've got on workbench to whatever font we selected in this application and we can also do that with the default system text as well and so it's going to say i can't do that because you've got a command line into this window open and amiga dos shell but if we close that down and refresh then that shows us that we can install those fonts and have those and it boots us into dpaint 2 which we'll be showing you in the next part of this guide